Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I am back with a review and some gameplay of a game I have been playing for several years now that is Riptide GP Renegade. This is running on the Nintendo Switch. Now, when I say I've been playing this for a while, I should probably clarify because I really played this game, at least the first version of it, back probably in 2011, 2012. Um, Gosh, is that when it came out on iOS? Something like that. But basically I played it way back in the day on like my probably second generation iPad or something like that. And so it's my understanding that actually technically this is the third game. There has been Riptide GP, then Riptide GP2, and this is Renegade. And the reason why I keep playing this game so much is because it is so damn awesome. So what's going on here? Well, the first thing that you need to know about this game is that it is made by Vector Unit. Now, they may sound kind of familiar because they created another one of my uh, all-time favorite racing games, and it is Hydro Thunder Hurricane on the Xbox 360, a game I am still really bummed that there is no physical version of it. If you are Vector Unit and you are watching this video, do something. I mean, at least there's backwards compatibility on Hydro Thunder Hurricane, but to have... I don't know, to have a physical version of that would be just awesome. But I digress. Uh, so they created this series, and you can definitely see the DNA of it. However, I should probably mention that the DNA of this game goes back even further than that, because the people who made this game actually worked on a little-known hidden gem called Blood Wake. Do you remember that? So you can see the DNA of this water-based racing game all the way back to the original Xbox. Now, that said, what makes this game so much fun? Well, again, if you've ever played a Hydro Thunder game, you know that racing games on water is unlike anything, any other kind of racing games that you may play. You know, uh, how do I describe this? I mean, I, of course, you know, most of you have probably played this type of game, but when you're racing on water, it's very different than when you have wheels on pavement because essentially what happens is is that you know you only go in the direction that you're pointing in when you give it the gas when you give it the juice which again is very different than steering a wheel on a car and so in, in many ways it's a very different feel um it's one actually that i really like doing in real life too every once in a while we'll rent some jet skis whenever i'm over in eastern washington or also over here, actually, last summer we rented some. And it's just so much fun to do, just to get out there in the sunshine, get out there in the water. Oh, by the way, I didn't do too hot in this particular race here, but don't you worry because I think I upgrade my, my vehicle after this and uh, set myself up to win the next race, hopefully. But yeah, racing on water is unlike any other type of racing game. And I think that's why I, I like it so much. I mean, you know, Wave Race being the obvious example, you know, that a lot of people talk about when they talk about these kind of games. Uh, but also Splashdown Rides Gone Wild. Again, it's like, you know, there's a pattern there with me in these type of games. And again, this one does it really well. This is a, a really well-made, really well-executed watercraft racing game. The water physics just feel right. The way that your your jet powered vehicle, whatever it's called, uh, bounces around on the water is awesome. Plus this game also takes into account the pitch of it as well. So for instance, if the water is smooth, you often kind of want to lean your character back so you can kind of glide over bumps, but you can also push into waves and pop out the other side as well, like big, you know, steep waves. Uh, you can do all of that. So there's a lot of nuance to this kind of game and it's really fun. Also, you, you've obviously noticed that there is a full trick system in there and you really are encouraged to do tricks to get boost. Boost is definitely something that you're gonna wanna do in this game as well. Uh, there's also certain courses and tracks that are nothing but boost. Uh, I tend to not be great at those for some reason. I think it's because I get in the, uh, kind of in the habit of doing the same trick over and over. You know, you don't have that much time to decide. And so I'll kind of uh, rely on some standard tricks that I like to do. I do the same thing in Tricky all the time as well in the SSX series. Uh, it's a habit I kind of need to get out of. 
And as you can see here, the tracks in this game are really cool. They're kind of uh, all over the place. You see some post-apocalyptic tracks like you see in this one here. I don't know if it's post-apocalyptic or just after some sort of natural disaster, obviously the flooding, but uh, just, it's just a really cool and interesting track. Um, some of these tracks actually will change every lap, which is uh, another thing I really enjoy in racing games. Not a huge amount, but sometimes little hidden secret ways to play through the track will open up as you uh, as you progress through it, which is really fun. So there is the incentive to kind of learn them and experiment. And the career mode in this game is pretty robust. I mean, it's going to have you starting off relatively slow, but then, you know, as you progress, you'll earn coins or cash or whatever it is to upgrade your vehicle uh, and also unlock different, more complex tricks. So there definitely is a reason to continue playing this game, although it's, it does get a little bit grindy. Uh, at a certain point in this game, I was actually kind of stuck. I was losing more races than winning races. And it was simply because my, my craft was just underpowered and I needed to uh, go back and replay some of the earlier tracks to get more money. I think that's probably where some of the mobile DNA of this series is kind of leaking into it. Although the Switch version has none of that free to play stuff in there. You buy the game, you unlock the game and you can play it. But you will run into a wall at a certain point where no matter what you do, you just can't seem to win races. And so that's kind of where I was at as I was stuck around, I think, level six or seven. And I just needed to go back and just replay a couple races to just get more money to unlock more stuff. It wasn't that big of a deal. And honestly, the game's fun enough that it's kind of cool to do that. But uh, just be aware that, yeah, there is going to be a little bit of grinding in this. And I guess I want to talk about the graphics too, because some people do complain about about the series graphics, although I gotta be honest, I'm not entirely sure why. I think that they are fine. Uh, but some people do look at, at this and go, uh, I can kind of tell it's a mobile game. Again, I don't really care. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, for, for me in my collection, I've got Atari games in my collection that I enjoy playing. And so I look at games like this going, wow, this looks really good. You know, there's got, re there's reflections. The frame rate's running at a pretty consistent, I think 60 frames per second. Maybe it dips occasionally, but you know, I think it looks pretty good. Now that said, it's not a PS5 title or anything like that. Um, you know, it's barely probably a PS4 title, but I still think it looks good. And again, for me, it's all about the gameplay and that's where this, this that's where it excels. So are there any negatives? Well, you know, I guess I, I mentioned the whole level grinding thing that does get a little annoying. It, it you know, I, I hate losing when I feel like that the computer's cheating. And they're not really cheating, they're just sometimes overpowered and it really makes you pay attention to, uh, you know, how many jump, like you notice that I'm trying to do tricks all the time because I need that boost all the time. So uh, that's one of the annoying things. I do think it's a little bit, maybe a little bit, I, I hate to say unbalanced, but it kind of is a little bit, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of the anything else. The, the, I guess the only other complaint I have about this probably is that it's, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth. This game has been out for several years now, and it, it kind of would be cool for them to go back and do another version of this for modern consoles. Maybe just, you know, crank up the fidelity even further. You know, that's the, I guess that's the downside to having a game or franchise that you really enjoy, especially when there's not that many other games that do it well. You know, with, with these guys, they've got the long pedigree of doing these kind of games. And yeah, other games will kind of come along, but they don't feel like this. And I feel like the, the developer here has the magic touch in doing these water-based racing games. And so naturally I just want more of them. So yeah, that's my quick take review of Riptide GP Renegade running on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, another game that sadly does not have a physical version of it. Man, that sucks because, you know, there's going to be one day when I will not be able to play this at some point, which again sucks, man, because so many of these games, they deserve to be preserved. Thankfully, this game has been released on en en enough systems that I think I'll probably have a digital version because I think I've got this on. Well, I've got it on the Switch, obviously. I have it on iOS and I think I might also have it on maybe the Xbox. I'm not entirely sure. 
But anyways, yeah, it's just another game that I think is definitely worth checking out if you haven't. Uh, often you can get this game on sale. So if you're looking for, you know, to play it or whatever, uh, you know, I think it's actually worth the full price. There's enough content here that you will feel like you get your money's worth. But since it is a digital game, you can always be looking out for those sales. Either way, I don't think that you're gonna be disappointed in it. By the way, it also supports all multiplayer options. It's got split screens, got online, it's got leaderboards and all that sort of fun stuff too. So, all right guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.